Hi, Roger McGoulis from O'Reilly here with uh, Anupam Singh, who's the Chief Customer Officer for Cloudera. Welcome. Hi, how are you? So, in this world of data, customers certainly face a lot of challenges in making things work. It's been a topic for many years. What do you think are the chief challenges that they face? So, every year the challenges change. This year, when we talk to customers, we were with 50 customers yesterday for the entire day. The biggest challenge is business wants access to data really, really quickly. They want it fast, they want it now, they want it today. And IT seems to be uh, blocking that access almost, saying, what about security? What about governance? Uh, where do you want to run it? What location is best for you? So there's this tension between central IT and line of businesses around getting to insights faster. Right. So, Cloudera just announced a, a enterprise uh, data cloud. Um, what exactly does that consist of? So, uh, the the biggest thing about enterprise data cloud is to think from the perspective of that tension between line of business and IT. The first is. We all agree that there are many form factors right now. Uh, you could run it on public cloud, you could run it on private cloud, you could run it on-prem. So a big characteristic, a big attribute of it is you should be able to run anywhere. Businesses are complex, they can choose to run anywhere. So the hybrid nature of uh, a data management platform is an inter important attribute. Um, the second one is, you and I know, we have grown in this space, uh, SQL was the only way to work with data 10 years ago. Remember that time? And now, kids write Python, right? So imagine a platform where you want to be able to write Python programs as well as SQL programs. You want to do machine learning. You want to do databases. Both of them should work. So the second attribute would be multifunction analytics. The third one is what all of us worry about every day. Um, we run some of the biggest uh, uh, regulatory workloads in the world. We run the data platforms for a lot of telcos. That data is sensitive. You wouldn't want your phone calls, your prescriptions, your credit card transactions to leak out. So being secure and governed, irrespective of where it's running, is the third biggest attribute. And fourth, something that you and I would identify with, 100% open source. Not 96%. <laughs> All 100%. So, four attributes would be hybrid, multifunction, governed, and open source. So, how does it differ from the other cloud uh, things out there? So, one, if you're a public cloud vendor, you are by necessity working on your cloud native platform. So, you cannot be multi cloud if you're focused on just one cloud. If you're a SQL database vendor, who wants to build a warehouse on the public cloud, what's the first word I use? SQL. What about all my Python programmer friends? Are they banned from working from data? So there's, uh, there's a necessity to be multifunction. Uh, secure and governed, we've just invested 10 plus years at Cloudera and Horton together to build some of the best lineage and auditing engines so a lot of cloud providers have been focused on the infrastructure, but they haven't been able to build out their security and governance software. So we are very different because we have done that for 10 plus years. Uh, we are masterful at doing it with banks and telcos. Um, and finally, in terms of open source, um, the moment you build a cloud service, which a black box, which is a black box, you're already not open source. Even if you profess to use Hadoop maybe, or use some open source stack, the service is not open source. So that's how we distinguish ourselves mm -hmm. from the cloud native vendors. So this used to be called Strata plus Hadoop world. Mm -hmm. um, Hadoop has gotten some short shrift recently, but you've written a blog post that's gotten a lot of attention. Yeah. So we have to ask, is Hadoop dead? Yeah, people often confuse me for Arun Murthy. Uh, Arun is the one who wrote the blog post. Uh, but when we were writing the blog post, our focus uh, was to talk about the philosophy. What's the philosophy of Hadoop? It's a disaggregated stack, so that you don't have one language that rules them all. Um, it is 
meant to be uh, taken apart, so to speak, because it's open source. So for us, Hadoop as a community, as an effort, as an initiative, is a philosophy. And it actually was the start of many of these things that you see in enterprise data cloud. Uh, many of the things that you see around being able to run your data platform anywhere. When you're, when you're open, when you have a disaggregated stack, you can move it around. Uh, you want to govern it, the best way to go have a governable stack is it should be open. So um, the philosophy continues. Uh, uh, for example, if you have swiped your credit card since the morning, if you bought coffee, if you took uh, uh, a car over here, in all cases, you've already used Hadoop 20 times since the morning. So to say that Hadoop is dead or alive is, is we're not giving enough credit to a great open source community that has successfully ingrained itself into almost all our daily activities. Well, there's a great uh, article by Kevin Kelly around that no technology ever really dies. Yes, so exactly. exactly. There's and once it reaches the kind of adoption that we've had, uh, you know, uh, top 10 banks, top 10 telcos, healthcare, government, everywhere we own or uh, our customers put all their trust into our data platform. And there's, we've seen easily banks have 100 plus petabytes on Hadoop. So the technology is not going anywhere. It just needs to evolve. Great. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much.